whatever you do it's not just about you it's about the others around you as well so you know when you when you um, respond to a situation don't just look at it from your angle but also understand what is it that the stakeholder requires what is it that the person you are going to be sending this communication to who is your customer what is it that that person requires so it's about seeing the bigger picture a little bit and uh, i also mentioned about very important to see that every single day you try and uh, enjoy as much as you can the work that you do right hi and welcome to another episode of the people hum interview series this is your host anushka at people hum people hum is an end to end one view integrated human capital management automation platform the winner of the 2019 global cody award for hcm that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work we run the people hum blog and video channel which receives more than 400000 visitors a year and we also publish several interviews with well known names globally every month we have with us today manish kumar manish is a seasoned hr and learning and development professional as well as a tedx speaker and keynote speaker He specializes in HR management, change management, diversity and inclusion, and much, much more. He is a two-time Toastmasters champion as well as accomplished storyteller. In the past, he has had a successful brush with cricket commentary and TV hosting at ESPN Star Sports. He regularly trains and speaks at leadership development initiatives and corporate events, and has also been featured on the Times of India, a leading Indian national newspaper. We are so happy and honored to have someone of his nature today on our interview series. Welcome, Manish. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you very much, Anushka. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. The pleasure is absolutely ours. So, Manish, just diving right deep in the interview, the first question I really had for you was very specific to the current scenario that we're all experiencing, and that's the pandemic. So, as someone who really specializes in change management. would you say the very term has been really portrayed in a whole new light due to the pandemic no absolutely i think uh, there's no doubt that in terms of you know scale suddenness of it all this pandemic has has definitely been a very unprecedented and this word is used so many times but that's just the right word unprecedented um situation is what the pandemic has been in our times um there may have been you know calamities and and various political or whatever kind of situations in certain countries or regions but probably in our generation this is the first time that we globally are are fighting a common let's say enemy or a common adversity and so in that way it's definitely unprecedented um yes uh, it it's it's something that has been a big challenge in terms of change management you know crisis management even right for for us as uh, hr um i think the biggest priority has been that uh, you know ensuring the safety and well-being of our employees our customers and partners so we've really had to work very very closely with our internal ohs teams which is the occupational health and safety teams and um particularly for roles uh, you know like every company has roles that are customer facing or roles that require access to hardware or equipment or you know factory based uh, roles right so these roles are ones that require physical congregation or physical movement to be most effective so particularly for such uh, employees we have to be mindful that we have done um the best job possible in terms of assessing risk in terms of putting in place the right protocols uh, ensuring that communication um, is is done well around these areas and there is full compliance right so um i think that's been our topmost priority for uh, most of this time undoubtedly or at least one of the areas that we've been very very um keenly watching and we continue to do so uh the other areas i would say which have been a challenge at this time but equally important um have been sustaining employee engagement and motivation at a time like this uh it's it's i often say that it's very easy to um for us as individuals and employees therefore to paint ourselves into a corner or to feel like an island you know um the mind can play havoc uh, our emotions all of this can really um in the face of such a pandemic can really play havoc with us so how, how do you as an hr um organization or even as a company ensure that your employees are are feeling motivated engaged just in the right mind space has been something very very important we have had a number of initiatives around the same um and i guess uh, a very significant aspect of trying to manage uh, the change that we are going through has been uh, how to sort of ensure that whatever hr initiatives we have um, undertaken or or even hr processes that we have how to make sure that they have uh, they are at least as effective if not more effective uh you know in the in the virtual or in the remote form as as they would have been in an in person format so um yeah those are probably two or three areas that that have been the biggest challenge in terms of 
managing this entire uh, situation that that we've uh, that we are in. Um, I won't say that it's it's um, something that we have um, completely overcome. We are in it. We are trying our best. I think in many areas we've, uh, as a, as a community as a whole, we've really uh, done a good job. But we are still yet to see the end of this entire situation. So we need to remain vigilant and remain uh, uh, in a mode where we're doing our best. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you on that one. And uh, I thoroughly second you on the fact that we really need to make our employees feel wanted at such um, a, a, an uncertain time because they're really going to um, be mindful of that and like, like remember that for a really long period. Right. So that's extremely crucial. So um, coming to the next question, Manish, you know, um, in your TED talk, and uh, when I watched it, I was completely blown, honestly, uh, you also spoke on the whole idea of the limitless employee. And um, so, like, in a nutshell, could you just brief our audience regarding the same thing? Sure. So um, when I said limitless employee, in a nutshell, what it, what it was is um, an employee who who is able to look beyond limitations and is able to, you know, see opportunities or, or explore and not boxed in by, by what he or she perceives are limitations around him or her. And, and um, so it, it's in a way uh, how we can be our very best at employ as employees, right? And um, I did focus uh, quite a bit of my time in the talk as to why this is important, right? So why is this even important that I need to be limitless or whatever at work? Why can't I just be the way... I feel like, or, or, you know, whatever comes to me naturally. So uh, if you look at any research or any study, you know, um, they all say that uh, we spend typically one third of our adult life at work. So that's a lot of time that we're spending to just be counting the hours and days and just waiting for the end of the month when we get our paycheck. Uh, so if, if we can be our best as employees, inevitably, you know, we will be our best in the other two thirds, the other spheres of our life, right? So uh, that's what sort of motivated me to uh, talk about this topic. And I thought it's an area where all of us, myself included, all of us can do, uh, can constantly strive to do better. So um, in this talk, I shared uh, this realization that I think we should come to terms with and a few steps or a few methods that I thought we can all um, say adopt to sort of uh, become uh, limitless employees and be our best versions as professionals. And especially in today's context, you know, uh, we keep talking about work-life balance and then it became work-life integration. And here we are, this pandemic, you know, is, is, uh, is, is work-life integration at its maximum, right? So uh, this is probably uh, the best possible time, even though best is probably a little bit of a, a controversial word to, word to use. But in this context, it's probably the right time to really see how we can uh, be our best as professionals. And, and that's where I think, I hope, that my idea of limitless employee will, will help us, those of us who are um, getting to watch it or who feel that it, it applies and helps us. That's great. Um, completely agree with you. And I think now HR is really uh, posed with a challenge uh, that they've never really experienced before. So um, it's just like new for everybody, whether it's uh, HR tech with remote uh, workforce management tools or HR in general employees. Absolutely agree. So just to follow up question, would you like to um, just share probably one or two strategies uh, on how employees can become limited to the workplace? Sure. Uh, I did mention those briefly in the talk, like I said. However, uh, a few quick things. One I spoke about is uh, to figure out how you can enjoy every single day at work. You know, so if, if for whatever reason, you're not looking forward to a particular day, find something else that, that would uh, excite you for that day at least. But, you know, as much as possible, try and enjoy every single day at work, you know, not just wait for the Friday because, hey, now the work week is over and, and you know, you can um, get your mind off it for some time. So that kind of, uh, let's say that kind of a, of a mindset is not healthy or, or, or sustainable even uh, for, for a long time, right? So find a way to be happy every day. And the second thing that I talked about is, how do you use the organization and, and the work that you do as an opportunity to express yourself and also to, to enhance yourself, right? So I remember using the words uh, as a lab or as a stage. So a lab is where you would experiment with yourself 
look at what are the areas that you need development in and work consciously on those and you know you can use the performance process uh, to do that you can discuss with your manager get feedback from stakeholders peers to do that so so use it as a lab to experiment with yourself and develop yourself fully and and try and use it as a stage stage is where you know we perform at our very best we like to um, to to sort of um, put it all out there and and every time we perform we want to do slightly better than the last time right so some of those areas if if we can um uh, you know try and bring into office and and it is possible it's not that it's not uh, it, it's not that it's uh, too daunting or something like that it really is possible if we apply our minds to it and and give it a shot it's, it starts with us so we have to really um, you know um, uh, give that first step from our side and the third thing that very importantly i spoke about was about um whatever we do at work it's important to realize that it's never just about us we are inevitably in an ecosystem so the first thing that we do impacts a particular end customer maybe or a stakeholder with whom we have that particular engagement or interaction um whatever we do the way we are impacts the team around us or or you know ultimately if you roll it up it it actually impacts the organization as well so if you can really think about that and work accordingly in whatever in whatever your um uh, whatever contribution you're making for the company that sort of really makes you a limitless employer not limited by let's say just my job description that these are the five things i'm supposed to do so that's all i will do so yeah those are the few things that i did speak about uh, you know in the talk that was great that was such an enlightening response and i completely agree with you i uh, generally feel you need to put yourself in the other person's shoes uh, to also kind of upskill yourself i think the the pandemic has really gotten people to um, unlearn many things and relearn it in a better fashion right, right. so yes totally agree with you on that one so come to the next question manish you know uh, how important do you feel diversity and inclusion is in the workplace of today and tomorrow and like do you just feel um uh like different groups of people and um people belonging to different uh, diverse sections of the community they interpret diversity in a different way yeah so for, first of all you know diversity and inclusion or d and i for short as we call it you know it's it's um in my opinion one among the top focus areas for most organizations and it will continue to be and um, yes depending on the context of the organization uh, i do think it is perceived differently um could be perceived differently within smaller groups in the organization or maybe uh, as a whole as well uh i think to really make it um real sustainable and also a way to enhance productivity ultimately that is what it can really be the first uh, and foremost thing that we need to do uh, as an organization maybe is is to really arrive at a common understanding of what dni means for us right um it, it can't it can't work if if uh, there are siloed understandings of it there has to be a common communicated understanding of of what dni is um some of the most let's say um elementary or 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 first instances of what dni means to a lot of people is um on the question of gender you know how many women employees do i have in my workforce maybe or or maybe other categories you know whether it's the um, um whether it's the um, disability uh, people with disabilities or not versus you know uh, sexual orientation these are all terms that are being used in the context of dni so it's very easy to look at employees as categories like these right and and think of okay Uh, i need to look at how many employees do i have uh, that's important uh, but at the same time it's also important to see that i have the policies in place that encourage d and i and uh, even more importantly i think d and i is is also a mindset thing it's a culture thing right so if if d and i has to be successful ultimately we have to understand that what really matters is not these but it's really whether the person has the right skills the right experience potential the right behaviors or cultural fit for the job that they that he or she is doing and and that these can be found in any human being you know regardless of uh, what category they are in what background what profile they have and so on so i think if we have that approach then then you know we typically end up having the best workforce and that's what i think every organization is striving towards uh, it's 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 an ongoing uh, process and i think uh, if and when we get there we will realize that we actually have a diverse and inclusive workforce right absolutely and i also feel um having a diverse workforce just giving uh different communities a representation is one thing and actually integrating and incorporating them in 
um, the workplace activities is a whole different ballgame altogether. And it's great that um, MNCs and uh, companies uh, globally are really striving to foster diversity and inclusion. Absolutely. And that's what I was talking about when I said the mindset or the culture. Right. Right? It's, it cannot be uh, just about the, let's say, you know, uh, I call this outside in, you know, so it looks like there is diversity and inclusion, but is there really diversity and inclusion? The looks like is what you mentioned, you know, the, uh, or, or uh, the, the representation of different communities. Yes. But right. what you mentioned is, is it there within, right? Is, is the, uh, the inclusiveness as a behavior, is it there within the company is what actually matters. And that's what, that's where DNI uh, is, is aiming to focus towards. And that's where it will be successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that response. Uh, going on to the next question, you know, um, em like evaluation of employees and just giving employee feedback is sometimes like really critical to an organization's growth and also to an employee's growth. And but it's also considered as kind of a dreadful process. So what do you think is the best way for employers to actually give employees feedback and vice versa? And do you think technology can help in this process? Um, I think it's, it's right that uh, performance evaluation and feedback, uh, you know, is a process that involves a lot of effort. Um, and and I, think it, I think rightly so, again, because, you know, this is one of, those, one of those things that if done well or done right, it can actually, um, you know, it's half the battle won uh, and, and it can produce wonderful results, right? But it's also challenging at the same time because it's, it's just so uh, tough to find what is that right um, process or what is the right way to do it? I don't think there is any one universally right like most things in life. It, it's, it's not something that can be perfect. Uh, we have to try and do it to the best we can. And it's also something that we need to iterate on depending on the industry, the market practices, and what's the reality for the company at that point in time, right? So it's, it's subjective, it's iterative, that's how it should be. And, and it's best done when we do it to the best that we can, right? There's no perfect way of doing it. Having said that, you know, teams and companies that have um, uh, a robust and healthy performance uh, evaluation and feedback culture, you know, those are teams and, and companies that are more motivated, more engaged. So they're obviously able to do more and do better. And that's the reason why it's, it's most important. Um, how can it be effective? You know, it's common HR and management parlance to say that for it to be effective, it needs to be regular, uh, you know, all year round and should not be just focused around a specific time frame once a year or something of that sort. Um, I think it's also very important that a good performance uh, evaluation and feedback uh, process or discussion spends equal amount of time reflecting on, on what worked well, what didn't work well, um, on ensuring alignment and also on, on looking at the way forward. So it's very important that each has its, its time and space in, in the discussions and in, in the whole philosophy of performance management itself. Um, technology, yes, can be a great enabler for sure. It can definitely help in, in a lot of areas around you know, content capture or, or analytics or, or goal setting, tracking, all of those things, which we call the hygiene areas, right? Technology can definitely be a great enabler in those areas. However, I think for, for it to really be an enabler, um, this is really up to, uh, up to us to do it well, first of all, right? I really think this is an area that is human at its core and not uh, technology at its core. So if it has to be effective, ultimately, um, we have to do the best for ourselves as employees, first of all, you know, we need to be uh, equally involved in the process in terms of assessing ourselves, thinking about how we achieved our goals and thinking about what we'd like to do uh, going forward, what our strengths are, what our areas of development are, all of those. As managers, of course, again, you know, doing our, uh, our, our duty in terms of assessing how our teams have done, uh, helping them grow or helping them with support wherever they need it. Um, and, and again, showing them a path forward, coaching them, guiding them through it. Uh, and, and of course, as HR, we have to ensure the integrity of the process, making sure that um, whatever communication needs to happen around this happens and is understood and imbibed well. Uh, so I think all of us need to do that really well. It's much more of a people um, function or much more of people um, involvement is what it needs at its core more than technology. But yes, technology can definitely enable, um, you know, provided we do this. Great, great. That was such a holistic response. Thank you so much for that. And I couldn't agree more with the point that you mentioned about aligning organizational goals to individual employees' purpose in the organization. Yep. Yep. Absolutely.
and I also feel uh, that micro contributions on an employee level also really matter in the macro level uh, on an organizational um, yeah level, and that's when you actually get to know performance management really um, helps bridge the two. So yes, absolutely, and and that's what I meant by aligning. So you know, you're very right. Um, if I if I can somewhere see the link between what I'm doing today and how you know it is adding to what my team does and therefore what my business does and what my organization does. That's really what alignment means. And uh, I as an employee need to uh, take the effort to try and see that for myself and assess how I'm doing. My manager or I as manager maybe, you know, need to show my employee that link uh, wherever possible. So uh, perfectly. And that's, that's very important for, for any uh, performance management process to be meaningful. Absolutely, absolutely. So just to kind of wrap this interview up, Manish, do you have any final sound bites you'd like to leave our audience with? Well, um, stay safe, stay well, you know, take utmost care. Um, everything else matters only if uh, you and your loved ones are, are well and safe. So I can't think of anything other than that to say at this time. That's great. That's great. Lovely passing note message. Uh, thank you so, so much. It was an absolute honor to interview you today. And I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing all your insightful views with us. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed interviewing you and um, I, I got some really fresh perspectives and I'm sure our audience are also greatly going to benefit from this interview. Thank you very much for your time again, Anushka. It was a pleasure being on People Hum and um, you stay safe and well as well. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you very much. And you have a safe and healthy time ahead of you. Hope to stay in touch with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.